This video is continuing on right where the previous video left off. We're in the document part 110, chap 12, then 11. Link to that is in the video description. All the code that I'm going to show you in this video is going to work perfectly in Octave in the same way that it does in MATLAB, with potentially some very small minor exceptions, which I will note when we come to them. I'm at about line 200 in the document, and we're going to talk about integer data types. So we're still talking about numeric data types like we were in the previous video, but instead of talking about floats and doubles, numeric representations with decimal places, we're going to be talking about integers, which can represent positive or negative whole numbers. So in this first section here, I'm going to show this function called int32, which is built into MATLAB and converts whatever input you give it, if it can, into a 32-bit integer. Now MATLAB has a little bit of weird behaviors that are not the same as many other programming languages. For example, if I take a number like pi here and I convert it to a 32-bit integer, it just shows up as 3. Now that is the same as most other programming languages. But suppose I take this number right here, just some arbitrary negative number close to 8,000, and I convert it into a 32-bit integer. Now, this 0.621 cannot be represented as an integer because integers are positive or negative whole numbers. And the difference between MATLAB here and, I don't know, like Java say, is that MATLAB is going to round the number. So it rounds it to negative 7,944. Whereas what Java would do is it would just chop off the decimal place. It would just say, nope, it's negative 7,943. And that's probably convenient, right? You would probably expect it to round if MATLAB is your only experience or if you don't have any experience with programming. So that's good. That's what we would hope for. Continuing on down. As mentioned in the previous video, a bit is a unit of computer memory that can represent a one or a zero, a true or a false, an on or an off, Whatever binary thing you want to represent, that's what you can think of it as. High voltage, low voltage, which is probably closer to what it actually is when you're running it in a computer. Bits are grouped into sets of eight called bytes, and integers come in different byte sizes. So we're going to look at those right now. So in this section, I'm going to show you the int max function and the int min function, which can be used to ask MATLAB, hey, how big can you make, for example, an 8-bit integer? How big can you make a uint 8? What's that? I'll talk more about that in a second. And then how small can you make an 8-bit integer? How small can you make a uint 8? So the u stands for unsigned. And if you ever see that in a programming context, it basically just means it's positive. It can't have a negative sign in front of it. So the single bit that's typically dedicated to representing the positive or negative sign is instead going to be dedicated to representing more of the numeric value. So what we'll see in the output here is that the very largest 8-bit integer is 127. Can't represent any numbers larger than 127. But for the unsigned 8-bit integer, it's 255, almost twice as large. Excuse me, actually slightly more than twice as large. And that's because that one extra little bit there is being used to represent a numeric value instead of whether it's positive or negative. And we see that very starkly when we look at the minimum 8-bit integer. It's negative 128. But what about the minimum unsigned 8-bit integer? Well, it's 0 because it can't go negative. And we can also ask about the maximum value for 32-bit or 64-bit, and they are considerably larger. You might think, oh, going from 32-bit to 64-bit, you would just double this number. Incorrect. Going from 32-bit to 33-bit, you would basically double this number. Every single additional bit doubles the amount that you can represent because you can represent all the numbers you could represent before plus this one or this zero in this extra bit. And the reason it's not truly double is if you think about like how many total numbers, just, just distinct total numbers can be represented in eight bits, it's two to the eighth, which is 256. However, the very first of those numbers that's represented is zero. So how many total values are there inclusive from 0 to 255? There are 256 numbers. That's how many numbers can rep be represented by a uint 8 and no more. So 256 itself can't actually be represented, just 0 through 255. I'm throwing this section in here because I didn't know where else to put it. I probably should have put it in the previous video. Complex numbers can be represented as singles or doubles or integers, 
And it's basically you just need two of them instead of one of them. So when I run this section and open up the uh, workspace over here, you can see that a default complex number is composed of a real and an imaginary component, and MATLAB just stores those two numbers, the real and the imaginary, as doubles in memory. So they occupy 16 bytes. Whereas just a single double, oh sorry, that's confusing. Whereas just one double is half that, is just eight bytes. But if we convert our complex number into a single type, so single type is half the size of the double type, well then it's half as large. So 16 bytes right here, cut that in half down to eight right here. Two four byte numbers are used to represent the complex number. And you could also use like int 32 right here if you wanted and convert it to 32 bit integers. And there you go. 32 is for the bits, not the bytes. How many bytes are there in 32 bits? Well, you divide by eight and you would get four, but there's two of them. So that's why it's a total of eight bytes right there. Now in this section, I'm gonna show how to convert to the integer type. Um, and it's worth digressing slightly into various functions that you can use for rounding. So this is kind of a, an unrelated topic, but I think, I think it's relevant in this section. So I guess I do think it's related. So here are four different rounding functions. Round, we've seen before. If you give it a number, it'll round that number to the nearest integer. If you wanna to round to like four decimal places, you just comma four inside the parentheses. The floor function is used to round down to the nearest, so not to the nearest integer at all, but to the nearest integer that's less than or equal to x. And this is very important when you start to consider negative numbers, all right? Because let's look at just the floor of 5.9. It's not six, it's five. But let's look at the floor of negative 5.9. Can you guess what it is? It's negative six. I think it's helpful to picture your number line vertically and then floor is always down, right? So the floor of negative 2.2 is negative three because if you picture that number line vertically, negative three is beneath negative two. And ceiling does exactly the opposite or seal is how it's abbreviated. So if I do seal of 5.1, I get six. But if I do seal of negative, 5.1, I get negative five, right? Because we're going upwards, uh, ceiling versus floor, right? So you picture like a house, the floor is below you, the ceiling is above you. And then fix is an interesting one. Fix rounds to the nearest integer towards zero. So if we do the fix of 5.9, it will be five. And we do the fix of negative 5.9, it will also be, well, it'll be negative five, but it'll also be five right there. So fix rounds towards zero. All right, but let's actually finally get into these integer functions. So there's a variety of functions to convert to an integer type. There's int eight, which will convert to an eight bit integer. uint 16, there's also a uint eight. There's also an int 16. int 32, there's uint 32. And there's also int 64 and uint 64. So this is just a sampling of a few of the values here. And let's look at what we get. So if I try and convert 1024 to an 8-bit integer, well, it doesn't fit. But what I get instead is the closest number to 1024, which is the biggest 8-bit integer, which is 127. Many programming languages will not do this. They won't give you the closest value. In fact, many of them will literally just copy over the bits. If you convert 1024 to an 8-bit integer in many languages, you will get zero because the first eight bits of 1024 are zero. So MATLAB, I think, does it actually in a very sensible way. uint 16 of 1.8 is gonna convert this decimal value, or really I should say double value, to the closest 16-bit integer. It's gonna round it up to two. Now, if you want a different behavior, like you don't want it rounded up to two, maybe you want it rounded down, you could use one of these functions above, as I do here with floor, to round this down before converting to a 32-bit integer to get one. If you try and convert a negative number to an unsigned integer, you'll get the closest number that can be represented that way, which is zero. Now, what happens when you divide integers of the same type, but you would normally get a double? Does it stay as an integer? What integer does it become? 
Take a second and try and guess what the output of this section is before I run it. Although I'm not going to wait long. In fact, pause the video. I'm going to run this in 3, 2, 1. So we have two 16-bit integers, 1 and 3. And when I divide them, I get 0. I get the 16-bit integer that's closest to 1 third. And then consistently, I would say, similarly, if I have 2 thirds, I get the 16-bit integer that is closest to 2 thirds. I get 1. There's a practice question from the book, but basically it just asks you to figure out what all the int maxes are for all the integers, and so here's the solution to that, I suppose. It's kind of a busy work problem. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Here are my outputs. So here we see the largest integers that can be represented by 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and finally 64-bit integers. Quite large numbers. And it's also important to note at this point that there are not gaps in the integer representations the way there are for floats and doubles. I discussed this in the previous video. You can't represent all the real numbers because even between two very, very close together real numbers, there's an infinite number of more real numbers. And we have to use a finite amount of physical hardware to represent these numbers. But with integers, two integers can be right next to each other and there, can, and there are not an infinite number of integers between some particular two integers. In fact, between any two particular integers, there's not an infinite number of other integers. So all the integers from zero to this number right here can be represented by uh, unsigned, or actually I should have said unsigned right here. All the integers from zero to 255 can be represented by an unsigned 8-bit integer. And then similarly for the other unsigned integers here. And you will notice that this number right here is just about half of this number right here because the unsigned integers use that extra bit that would be dedicated to representing the positive or negative sign. Instead, they use it to represent twice as many numbers. And then we can do the exact same thing with the minimum values. And I think the main thing to notice here is that although the unsigned integers can be used to represent larger numbers, their minimum has to be zero because they don't have a negative sign, whereas the regular integers can represent negative whole numbers. And that actually ends this video. In the very next one, I'm going to start talking about character and string data.